All right, fellas. I'm a little disappointed here. It's been 15 years, and I still don't know how to use a damn camera. It's ridiculous. But I promise you, there are better things to do in this video than to look at my ass. So just bear with me here. Just bear with the terrible camera skills. Why don't I ever figure this out till editing? Like, dude, you are literally right in the way of the shot, man. I'm blocking the shot, bro. It's ridiculous. But trust me, this I think this is going to be a cool video. You're probably going to like it. So let's see what we got going on here today. We are calcining some material, and we ain't even bothering to turn the furnace out during crucible changes. Okay. So we have two different forms of the calcium oxide. This came from the garden lime. I don't know if you can see this, but it's a fairly white material. It's very white in color. Almost as white as flour. Then we have this material here, which is made from rocks out of the driveway. And as you can see, it's a brown color. So I have 10 grams of the white stuff, the garden lime, that's been calcined for about two hours at 900 Celsius. It's a very important temperature for this because if you go too much hotter, the calcium oxide will begin to react with the quartz and other materials and act as a flux. We're currently at a water temperature of... Oh, wow, well, that ain't working. We gotta do a different probe here. Bear with me. We got a bad socket. We're going with this one right here. I don't know if you can see that. It says 66 degrees right now. I don't know what's going on with this terminal. It's Chinatown over here, man. So there's 10 grams of this material. We're gonna dump it in there. And as you can see, the temperature is going up a little bit there. Nothing, you know, too exciting. We're gonna stir it good. Get a good stir on that. And we're hitting around 111 degrees right now, 112. And we'll see what the max temp is. And this is how I test my calcination procedures. Okay, we're gonna call that 106, I think. Yep, it's starting to drop temperature. It's pretty cold out here too, so. There's 50 grams of water. Looks like 67 degrees on the water temperature. We're now gonna take 10 grams of the driveway stones, as you can see, it's some really brown stuff. It seems heavier. Dude, that was almost 10 grams right there. There you go, there's 10 grams. And we're gonna add this to the water. In the past, it's been shown that this stuff is far more reactive. And as you can see, we're already at 180 degrees, for crying out loud. 190. I'm gonna, it's boiling in there. Look at this. I got it up to like 350 one time. It was incredible. I'm gonna stir that around a bit. So the probe is actually was in some of the hot material itself, you know, like a sludge. <clears throat> So my hunch was correct. The calcined stones are making a material that's far more reactive than the calcined limestone. I wish you could see how white that is. That's a really white material there. And this is a brown material. We're up to 150 degrees there. Temperature is still rising. We're at 175 degrees Fahrenheit. So freaking wow. That is super interesting. What does that mean? Is it possible that this stuff has more quartz? I mean, I just don't get it. Okay, we stopped at 177 degrees there. We're now losing temperature. Crap, that whole time I wasn't recording, that's a scary thought. So we got up to 133 and 177 on this stuff. 
This stuff is so white. I'm wondering if they added more stuff in it for the purpose of it being a garden lime. Because it's certainly not just calcined limestone. All right. So we're going to let this thing cool down to about 250 degrees or so. And we're going to put it inside a metal pail that I have. This material cannot be exposed to moisture. And once it gets down below 212 degrees, it will start to do so. Maybe even before that. So we'll get the rocks out of there and put them in a separate container. But uh, for the most part, that's the plan. <laughs> only about an hour and a half on this batch my crucibles fall apart I'm gonna close it right back up the whole crucible is melting and falling apart looks like we had a disaster in there so I'm not gonna be able to extract that hot we'll just leave it in there all right so we lost that crucible this one here has got a crack in it also these are very old crucibles these things are I've been using them for like five years. All of them. That's what all this coating is all about on them. That's kind of been holding them together. But I want to show you guys how reactive one of these rocks are. Let's get this out of here real quick. Okay, I have one of these two-hour rocks here. I wanted to show you how reactive this is. It looks like maybe some of it didn't react even. See how that's still gray right there? So we'll see if we get a leftover gray piece. So just bringing it up to calcination temperature does not constitute a calcined material. This thing's liable to explode on me. One of them did earlier. It blew up. Like literally exploded. Might not be enough water on that. Yeah, and as I suspected, after two hours, you've got this gray portion right here. This is an unreacted piece. So after two hours in those red hot temperatures, this piece still did not calcine. I wanted to show you one blowing up, but. So these pieces here were only in there for about an hour and a half, but they're smaller. They absorb a lot of water. No explosions that time. The one I did off camera blew up on me. It was so reactive. Look at that. <laughs> Tell me that stuff ain't reactive. That'll like burn you if you touch it. So we were hitting almost 400 degrees Fahrenheit from the heat of the reaction. Oh yeah, you can feel the heat kicking off of that. It was starting to melt that tray, so I dumped it out of there. So in one of our tests, we are going to try to glue this crucible back together and use it again. As soon as I make some of my high temp refractory adhesive, and that'll be kind of a baseline test. This one here has a crack in it. That's right where the torch was hitting it. The coating that's on this crucible is the one of the refractory adhesives. But it was just used as a coating. As you can see, it's a, a thin coating on there. The crucible is very thin. It's been used a lot. So I started coating it with this material. I don't know what the heck's going on there. That might be like some carbon buildup or something right there. But this stuff stood up pretty good. It was painted over an inferior coating. The coating that you see on here is not as good. So 
that's what you see this stuff going on underneath here it was painted over this stuff right here okay so that's about two hours and i've also got a bunch of the rocks inside that container right there they're warming they're cooling off they're pretty warm right now yeah that's still hot i don't want to let them dry off in the air so Got ourselves a sizable amount of highly reactive calcium oxide. We'll have to pulverize those rocks. And uh, we're going to make some high temperature refractory adhesive out of it. And we're going to glue these back together. I believe I need some aluminum oxide to do that. I'm not sure yet. I have this recipe right here that does not have any aluminum oxide in it. And it seems fairly promising. This is a majority of this is zirconium oxide. And I did some high temp testing with it and it holds up pretty good. This is very hard to break this stuff. I can't break that. But uh yeah. I'm going to be taking a look at some of that. I have some some different um, recipes that I've tried. This is out of that homebrew aluminum oxide that we made. And because of the aluminum in it, it bubbled up in there. You can see how porous it is here. I'll get you a piece. The hydrogen gas made like a refractory foam. It's not a very good example. Some of the pieces you could really see the foaming. There's a good shot of it. Wow, that's pretty hard stuff though. This was not a good recipe. It had too much of that aluminum oxide in it. This was uh, the 27 grams. And this was 21 grams. Seems to be a better material. So we'll take a look at those.